Welcome to Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Today we're getting into some 3D printed prosthetics. We've got advanced metal manufacturing for micro turbines, 3D print service discussion, along with the inventor of FDM 3D printing retires and Slice Engineering and Formlabs, both with really cool new products, and lastly, a million dollar contract from the Air Force. Let's get into it. All right, guys, starting off today, we're gonna talk about prosthetics and 3D printed prosthetics, one of the best applications for reducing costs and lead time, and one of the most heartwarming, in my opinion. We've got guys from Enable to other companies that are making prosthetics for kids, and we've got a new company today, Unlimited Tomorrow, and they're one of the players in this prosthetic space. Now, over the years, there's been a lot of companies relying on 3D printing technologies to design custom-made, accessible, and even aesthetic prosthetics, tackling disability on a whole new level, especially when it comes to finances. Unlimited Tomorrow is a young American company that has just launched its 3D printed robotic prosthetic arm, True Limb. That's awesome because most of the prosthetics we see are mechanical and not fully motorized, so this is pretty neat. All you've got to do is 3D scan your limb from home and send them in your data and they'll take that and make you a custom fit. Now, traditionally, this would be an $80,000 prosthetic arm, but they're getting the cost with additive manufacturing down to around $8,000. There's a great video on this down below in the description. You should totally go check it out. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying this video so far. Moving right along, we've got advanced metal additive manufacturing making micro turbines 40 times more efficient. So over at Sierra Turbines, they've been breaking the rules of conventional manufacturing to improve performance of micro turbines. Roger Smith, the CEO, explains that the company plans to additively manufacture at least 95% of their micro turbine components, even when the company reaches large scale production. To do so, they decided to collaborate with Velo3D. Awesome guys, we've got a couple videos on our channel. Check those out. Really cool powder pack technology that uses no supports. Very, very cool stuff. Now, in metal manufacturing, supports aren't actually used to support uh, the models, but more so to keep them from warping. Because when you're superheating metal, it loves to warp and curl and bend and all this stuff. So having support-free metal printing is a huge advantage. So the company's aim is to make their turbines 40 times more efficient by providing 10 times more power density and reducing the weight by 50% compared to traditional micro turbines. Roger is confident that his team will succeed where others have failed thanks to a host of design improvements made only possible with advanced metal additive manufacturing. This is where Velo3D's support free capabilities and their dedicated additive manufacturing software Flow came in. Today, a lot, of, a lot of designs are actually impossible for metal additive manufacturing because you have to have all those supports in there. And then there's all kinds of post-processing. You gotta grind them out, cut them out, do all sorts of stuff. It's just a messy process. So when you don't have supports, you can save time, money, material, and a lot of labor. Roger also goes on to say that the team at Velo3D worked with us on design, tweaking things to make it more manufacturable, but it was actually their flow software that was the biggest enabler. So in the end, 3D printing two of these microturbine combustors took about 50 hours of printing. In traditional methods, this same process would have taken literally months. This is a really huge thing. So essentially, this technology is gonna allow them to lower their costs, shorten their lead times, and allow them to consolidate dozens upon dozens of components into a single 3D printed part. Not just one part, but it's actually gonna be less mass, lighter weight, and it's gonna have better mechanical integrity than the other versions made with traditional welding and other methods. So very big props to these guys doing big things. I can't wait to see what they accomplish. Moving right along, we're gonna talk a little bit about why is 3D print pricing so complex? There's a great article on Fablu where they go, and they go into, you know, uh, it's the machine time plus the material cost, right? But that's really not all there is to it. There's actually a lot more things to consider from job failures. If you have a failed part that you gotta do a second time, you know, that's money and time. Uh, you've got waste material like supports, the labor to operate the machine, the labor to post-process the print and take it off the bed, the consumables like the beds, the nozzles, the glues, etc. cetera, uh, the actual electricity the machine's using, the, the environment with HVAC and lighting, not to mention the rental and property costs. 
uh, any profit to be made on the job, shipping costs, and even taxes. There's more than that, but as you can see, it gets really complex. So we've got a new company out there doing a totally different model called Twist 3D. These guys have decided to offer a flat rate for printing. That's right, flat rate. 29 bucks, USD, anything you want. Just $29, $29 any 3D model printed. What's the catch? The catch is, it's 29 bucks as long as it's black, as long as it's PETG, as long as you want 0.2 millimeter layer heights and 20% infill. And it also has to fit within an eight by eight by eight inch build volume. It really honestly makes a lot of sense because those settings, since those don't change, they can really have their material profiles tuned in and they can just crank out parts. And you know, maybe it's not gonna be perfect or this or that, but they have the thing, they have the caveat where, hey, it's gonna be this and these settings and that's it. That's what you get, 30 bucks, let's do it. Uh, I like it, I think it's a great deal if you're doing toys and trinkets, it's a great way to get, I mean, I might actually use this for some random stuff instead of doing it here in the shop. It's a pretty cool concept. Do you think you're gonna use it? Would you use it? Is $29 a good price for an eight by eight by eight? Let me know in the comments below. I think it's pretty smart for what they're doing. You know, we have a print service, but it's really different for each client. Sometimes they need strength, they need chemical resistance, radiation resistance, or it needs to go into the special environment um, but it's always going to be a little bit different you know how strong it needs to be where it's taking impact how you print the parts different each time so it becomes a much more complex matter especially switching between materials you're going from polycarbonate over to peak there's a lot of different things you have to do and still generally a lot of labor involved so twist i like what you're doing very cool let's see how it goes Moving right along, the inventor of FDM 3D printing, Scott Crump, has retired. This guy founded Stratasys in 1989 with his wife. And if you haven't heard of him before, you should probably look into it. Very cool guy. After 34 years, Scott spent his first day, last Friday, not working full time for the company, transitioning from chief innovation officer to technology advisor to the board. Scott and his wife Lisa co-founded Stratasys in 1989 and he served as the CEO for 25 years. Uh, Terry Walters gave a comment. He said, having known Scott for 30 plus years, he can say without reservation that he's one of the most approachable executives he knows. His sense of humor and his willingness to put himself out there is unusual in the world of business. He will do and say things that you might never see or hear from most executives, but that's what I like about Scott. I believe it's a big reason why he's been so successful and why so many people like and appreciate him. He also says that Crump is not going away and he does expect to see him at events, if we ever have any more, which we should hopefully next year. Scott, thank you. Thank you for everything you did, everything you've done, and you are the reason that we're making this video right now and selling and using the printers that we do every day. So, good on ya. Moving right along, we've got Slice Engineering releasing a new Mosquito Liquid product. Now this new product is for liquid cooling, specifically designed for heated enclosures. This is the first step in a significant extension of the Mosquito product line into high capacity industrial applications. Now like all of the Slice hot ends, the Mosquito Liquid is completely made in USA with very high quality top end materials. The liquid cooling block is precision machined out of a superconductive copper alloy and coated with a non mar highly inert gold colored plenty that allows for use with any commercially available coolant. The liquid is also featuring their latest bimetallic heat break, the first version to be totally conductively cooled. Now we can't really talk about the specifics yet, but the Mosquito liquid is featured on several industrial upcoming machines designed to print peak, Ultim, PPSU, and other high temperature performance thermoplastics. If you want to learn more about those, check out our website, visionminer.com. That is our bread and butter. High strength, high temp, awesome materials. Moving right along, we've got Form Labs releasing a new resin. They've got and machine. They're releasing a resin and a machine, the 3BL. Now, most of you have probably seen the 3L. It's their large format SLA 3D printer that they released last year. Now, they've been working on their 3BL specifically for biocompatible materials. So the 3BL is basically the same as the 3L, but the enhanced software package will enable it to process an enhanced range of biomaterials. To support their upcoming machine, Formlabs is currently seeking approval from the FDA here in the US for a new series of biocompatible resins. There will also be two more that are specifically designed for the use in the EU. Now, the 3BL is really designed and aimed at their traditional user base. Almost every 
dentistry in the U.S. has one of these machines in there. You walk in, you see the big orange box, and you're like, oh, they're 3D printing stuff. Very cool. It's been optimized for extreme accuracy, specifically for a liner production. According to Stefan Hollander, the managing director of Formlabs EMEA, each application has very specific needs and it cannot be brittle, it has to be super durable and biocompatible. So as for dentures, temporary crowns and bridges, they're going to launch permanent crowns and bridges as well as surgical guides. So Form 3L is already available at about 11 grand and the 3BL is available for pre-order at about 14 grand and is expected to ship in 2021. Moving right along, we've got a million dollar contract from the Air Force to repair airplane parts like turbines. The additive company Optimic was awarded one million dollars by the US Air Force to repair engine turbine parts. The agreement will involve using high volume production machinery to restore parts such as titanium turbine blades of aircraft. A million dollars may sound like a lot of money, but Realistically, it's a small slice of the $50 billion industry, which is aviation repair and military industrial complex around the world. Optimec is gonna repair military aircraft using its proprietary lens technology, a metal additive repair solution that was developed for commercial applications over two decades ago. It's been around a while. The technology uses a process called directed energy deposition, or DED, in which a concentrated stream of metal powder is shot forcefully into a molten pool created by a laser beam. I love it. Lasers and molten metals, this is great. The challenge given to us by the Air Force was to provide a system based on commercially proven capabilities that meet their production and technical requirements, said Jamie Hansen, VP of Business Development at Optimec. We'll be providing a first-of-a-kind machine with automation that enables virtually uninterrupted production in an oxygen-free environment. This capability will help enable the broader aerospace industry by meeting its cost reduction goals going forward. We love our military and we love it even more when they're using 3D printing. So it's great to see all these different stories of them picking it up and expect to see a lot more over the next few years. All right, remember guys, submit articles down below that we might have missed that you think we should have covered. And if you get picked, we'll send you a free bottle of our nanopolymer adhesive, which is our specialty bed adhesive designed for peak, Ultim, PPSU, and other high temp thermoplastics that we specialize in. We sell all kinds of materials and machines and accessories for these things. And it also works great on PLA and everything else, so it's kind of a cool thing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Check us out online. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below or give us a call. We love hearing from you guys. Anyway, well, since you're still watching the video, you should probably click on one of these over here. Other cool videos, new videos coming out every week, and we love you guys. Thanks a lot. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.